Welcome everyone to Eating Above the Rules. We have myself, Terrell Holland, and Laura on co-winners of NBC 10's Next Local TV Chef competition in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We're bringing you our new show called Eating Above the Rules. We started our catering business together. NBC 10 brought us together throughout the competition. We decided that we liked each other's work, so why not try something different? Yeah, absolutely. We're one of those stories that you get lucky to hear. Uh, we won a TV show, and it, and it took the career that we've always wanted. And you know, really put on the forefront of what we're doing. Um, I think the biggest thing about what we're doing is taking healthy food and showing people that healthy food can really be easy to make, awesome, fun to do with friends, and we hope you enjoy the journey. As well as delicious. Yeah, yeah that's very true. The food is so good. But well, we're filming here at Universal Charter School, Autumn Reed. We want to thank Universal Charter School for allowing us to use their facilities. As you'll see clips throughout the day, you'll see us going through the kitchen and through the prep station. All of this is Universal Charter. It was started by Kenny Gamble, one of the founders of the great music tradition here in Philadelphia. So we're blessed and happy to be here. Another sponsor we have for the first few episodes, at least for right now, is Sweet Christine's Bakery. So being that our whole series is gluten-free, which is pretty awesome, I am gluten-free myself, but Terrell is not, although well, you're learning very quickly. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Gluten-free cooking can be a challenge, and one of the biggest challenges, obviously, is the bread. You can't have gluten-free bread or bread without wheat, so you need to have a gluten-free product. Of so, course. So Christine's great. She's out in Kennedy Square. She's local. I've been doing a lot of work with her since the show. Yes, she has been. And her stuff is awesome. From I love it. From the breads to the rolls to the <laughs> you name it, the stuff is great. So you'll see a lot of her product as we go. Um, and regardless, all of our cooking will be good free, so you'll take a lot of new stuff from it. You learn what's safe, what's not safe, what's easy to replicate, what's kind of complicated and good free. And also diabetic friendly as well. That's another kick and another spin that we have on it as well. Yeah. So gluten free, diabetic friendly, can't go wrong, and delicious. Yeah, absolutely. So, we're looking forward to you guys taking this journey with us. And as you see these next couple of episodes coming up, enjoy eating above the rules. So today we will be making some home style chicken salad. Also, some stuffed grape leaves with turkey. Oh, yeah, always, always. I love the stuffed grape leaves that Laura makes, by the way. Okay, what else are we making? How can you forget big chicken wings? Chicken Buffalo wings cheese. are awesome. Oh, and if you can make them healthy, I mean, like, that's what's the just better a way? Win. What's the better way? Right? You gotta bake them. You gotta bake them. Always bake them. I Everything grew up good. having them baked, and to see people fry them just kills me. It just kills you. Why are you gonna add fat to chicken wings? It's just. It's yeah, because the fat comes in with the blue cheese, right? Blue cheese, the skin. I'm sorry, I love blue cheese. I was just being partial to blue cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's what we'll be making for you today. So come and join us on this journey. Yeah. So next we'll be making chicken salad. But we're going to start off with our vegetables and things that's going to go into the chicken salad. Give it that bite. Give it that crunch. So the first thing we have here, we have some celery. So the first thing you want to do before you do anything is make sure that you wash it. You want to make sure that you get all the dirt, all the brine. And while you're in here, you can also break off the side stems. That's what I normally do. Some people save them for stock. And you can always put this stuff to the side because waste not, want not. That's what all chefs believe. So we're going to put this to the side and we're going to save that for a stock at a later day. And these white bulbs at the end, you just want to make sure that you cut them off. You get this card done where you can save it for the stock as well. You basically just want to give it a nice medium to small dice. And it's fine if some pieces are bigger than the other because we want it to be rustic style. We don't want it to be too fine. We don't want it to be too soft. We just want to make sure that it has some bite to it because when we're done with it, we're actually going to top it or we're going to place it on top of a nacho. And remember, this is all finger food that you can make ahead of time. You can have your chicken salad ready. You can sit it to the side. The longer it sits, the better it's going to taste because you're giving time for all those ingredients to meld together and basically marry. So the longer that it sits, the better it's going to taste. So if you even want to make this the night before, that's perfect. So we have our celery dice. Take the red pepper, cut the top and the bottom off. And once again, anything that you have to the side, anything that you have left, we place to the side. You always can save that for a vegetable stock. Any type of stock that you want to make, you can add it to a chicken stock, a veal stock. But we want to always make sure that we keep the extra. Waste not, what not. It's one of the greatest models in the kitchen you can ever learn. And you get more bang for your buck when you go shopping. <laughs> so we're going to julienne these first. 
then we're going to chop them, or dice them, per se. Add our red pepper to our celery. Take our onion. Now we're not going to use the whole onion. This is a nice size medium onion. What we're going to do is just, going to just probably take a quarter of this onion, but we're going to still cut it in half. So we're going to use just about a quarter of it. So we want to just take the edge off. Once again, stock material. Peel the red onion. Take out the outer skin. And basically, what you're going to do is just take your knife and it off. Then you're going to just come down. This is going to help you give nice, uniform dice to your onion. And it's going to eliminate how much time it takes for you to dice, which means that less time for teary eyes. So you get about one fourth of red onion, throw that in there. Have our garlic. We have four cloves now. My, me, myself, personally, I love garlic. So, you know, the more, the better for me. However, you have to realize that if you're cooking for someone else, don't use as much. But we're going to go with four cloves of garlic today. Somewhat on the mild side. <laughs> Just take the garlic one, once again. Rough dice. Doesn't have to be too fine. We're going to place that on the plate because what we're going to do with this garlic, we're actually going to saute the garlic back. I like that saute flavor. Sometimes you can roast it if you want to. It's simple. All you have to do is just cut off the tops of a whole bulb of garlic. A little salt, pepper, olive oil, put it in some aluminum foil, you place it in the oven. 350, 375, 10-15 minutes, roasted garlic. Pull it out, nice and buttery, nice and sweet. Great. So next we have the chicken. We have all of our vegetables that's going to go inside of the chicken salad. We have our garlic to the side, which we're going to saute off in a minute. We have our seasonings here. What we're working with today is just some salt, some white pepper and paprika mixed together. We have some thyme, some basil, some bay leaves chopped up, and some margarine as well. And a little bit of tarragon, just a little bit. So those are the flavors that we're working with today. So my breasts have been cleaned off. You know, they're skinless, they're boned already. I'm going to just slice them down a little thinner so that they'll cook faster and a little more evenly. So what I'm going to do, I'm just take my knife, across, basically a butterfly cut, open it up, complete the cut, and there go one breast. You see how thin they are? So when we place these in the saute pan, they're going to saute up real quick, real nice. And once we get done with that, we're going to dice them up after they're sauteed. So that way we can incorporate them and start making the salad. So once again, for the seasoning. And we're not going to add any olive oil to this. Sometimes we would, but being as though we're going to add olive oil in our pan already, we don't need to add olive oil. We're going to take our seasoning. Make sure that you season both sides. That's one thing. Sometimes people have a tendency just to season one side, but you have to understand that you have to season both sides. We're going to season the other side the same exact way. So our chicken is all placed in the bowl. And the next time you'll be seeing these, we'll be placing them in a skillet. All right, so here we have our pan. We put some olive oil in there, about three tablespoons full. We got it nice and hot. You can see the smoke coming off of it. We have our chicken right here that we sliced up and seasoned. And the way you want to put them in, you always want to lay it away from you. So that way, you won't get popped with the oil. We're just going to place them in, nice and gentle. Make sure to control our fire and put like a medium heat. And like I said, they're going to cook fast. Because we sliced them down earlier. So when we did that, we actually helped cut down on the cooking time. So we're going to do this with all our breasts. We're going to come back, chop it up, add it to our vegetables, add our homemade mayo, a little bit of mustard, bind it all together, let it sit, and voila, 
We're gonna have chicken salad. Okay, so now we're gonna put our chicken salad together. We have our chicken breast seared off right here. They were sauteed in the pan. That's how they look when they come off. Nice golden brown. You can see the seasoning, nice little crisp to the top of it. Adds a little crust to it as well, but on the inside, nice and tender. Right here, we just added some mayo, some yellow mustard, added some chili pepper as well. We're gonna stir that together a little bit because that's what we're gonna add everything to. So we're gonna just take our chicken breast. knife. So once we dice it up, we're going to take it, add it to our mustard and mayo mix, along with that chili pepper in there as well. We want to add our celery, red pepper, red onion. And this is our roasted garlic, well, sauteed garlic that we did as well. I'm gonna fold all this together gently. Make sure I'm making sure that all the ingredients are incorporated. Make sure you get that mayo, that mustard. I'm just gonna fold it. I don't like my chicken salad too wet. I don't like it too dry. I like it just right. That's why I didn't add too much mayo. It's about three fourths of a cup of mayo. About one third, maybe less, one fourth of a cup of yellow mustard. Two tablespoons of chili powder. Take the rest of our chicken breast. That cut in there. This is going to actually take away some of the wetness of the mayo and the mustard. So it will be a nice consistency. It won't be too slimy or too wet for you. And you get to taste chicken. I've had chicken salad sometimes. And all you get to taste is just all the extra stuff. <laughs> no chicken, and you're wondering, where's the chicken? Remember that commercial, where's the beef? I'm always asking, where's the chicken? Where's the chicken? Oh, cranberries. Love cranberries. And some cranberries we're gonna add to it as well. Give a little fruity flavor, a little zing to it. Now, just fold the rest of the ingredients until it's well incorporated. So I'm here again with another appetizer. Now, I have to say this recipe not only makes me famous with my friends and my family, this is probably what helped me win the TV show. It's my turkey stuffed grape leaves. A little different than what you're used to. Um, I got the idea off of a, a very common Vietnamese dish where they use beef and they stuff it into grape leaves and they serve it on top of anything. It can be rice or rice noodles, you name it. This is kind of my spit on it. Um, I think it comes out really great. They're fun to eat, they're easy to make, and it is a great way to impress a crowd. My turkey makes it a little bit healthier, and it's a finger food, so hey, why not? So let's get started. In this bowl, I have a pound of turkey meat. Normally, I do this in three pound batches because you can freeze it. Everyone loves them, so they disappear before I get one, and they're just pretty easy to make. But today, just for you know camera purposes, we're gonna start with a smaller batch, so feel free to triple the recipe so again, here's some ground turkey meat. Feel free to use lean or if you want to use um, like a sausage blend, that works really well too. Okay, so now on this plate I have all of my spices. We have got brown sugar, we have some fresh scallions, we have some fresh grated ginger, I have some paprika, onion and garlic powder. I'm using white pepper. In a lot of Asian cooking they use white pepper instead of regular pepper. I like the flavor better and works really well in this recipe pour some salt in the middle. Then we have sage. Sage to me is the most crucial part of this recipe. You're almost going to get a sausage in a grape leaf and I think that sage is really what brings out that flavor. Then you have some parsley and brown sugar to give it that nice sweet tart taste. 
So, so now we're going to add all our flavorings. Now I keep comparing this recipe to something similar to a sausage. And you know, being gluten free, sometimes it can be a challenge to get a gluten free sausage. Um, a lot of the binding agents they use um, often, often are flour based or wheat based. So this is kind of a good idea to go off of that. You can make this into a patty if you don't have green leaves. I bet you if I wasn't on camera I'd be doing this by hand. But So there we go. Finding gluten free sauces is always a challenge. And sauces in this recipe are, are pretty crucial. Sauces in pretty much any international cuisine is pretty crucial. So luckily they've come out with a lot of Asian sauces that are gluten free. This is hoisin. It's an Asian barbecue sauce. It's great. It's like regular barbecue sauce but with like an added kick. So we're just going to add about two, three tablespoons of that. Pretty easy. Now soy sauce. You wouldn't believe it but there's actually flour in regular soy sauce. Um, it's again one of those binding agents and it's, it's terrible because I didn't know it for the longest time and if I'd go out for Asian food I'd get pretty sick. So this is the gluten free version. You don't need a lot of it. You've already got salt in there and you've got tons of spices. And then this is a fun one. So this is called Vietnamese fish sauce. It's kind of an instant fish sauce. Regular fish sauce, if you've seen it before in the store, almost looks like soy sauce. It's brown. Um, it's got a really pungent smell. This is a mix of that pungent fish sauce with some vinegar, some garlic powder, some fresh minced uh, peppers. It's really flavorful. It goes great with pretty much anything. It's great if you're going to make like a fun dipping sauce, but I actually add it to the meat. There you go. That's it. So now we're going to give this a really good mix. Take your time with it. You want to make sure all the flavor is incorporated. You don't want somebody to, you know, bite into a grape leaf and they have like a bunch of green onions or they really get hit with one of the spices. Take your time with this. The colder the meat, the longer it's going to take to uh, mix, but cold meat's a lot easier to roll into the grape leaves. So. If you take a look, the meat really starts to change colors. You put a lot in there between the paprika and the soy sauce and all those flavors. It's going from that really pale, pale red a nice brown color. You kind of see the green onions scattered about. You see some of the sage pop out. It's looking pretty good to me. It smells great here too. I wish you could smell it. All right, now's the fun part. I love rolling things. I think it's a fun way to make a meal that you know could easily be a sit-down meal or something you can pick up with your hands. And grape leaves are a great thing to use. So grape leaves look like this. You can get them in all different kinds, and I have to admit, it's very hard to find them. Um, Italian specialty stores are one place, and then I go to the Asian grocer, and the first time I actually went to go buy them, I didn't know how to say to them what I needed. So I showed them grapes, and I showed a picture of the leaf on the grapes, and they were like, oh, oh, I know what you want, I know what you want, and they went and got me the jar. So whenever I see them, I grab four or five jars, because they're really great to have around. They come in a really salted brine, and I'll explain that later. If you take out a bunch like this, and it really is grape leaves. As you can see, I'm taking each grape leaf and I'm just submerging it in some water. Now, the grape leaves come in as brine so they stay really fresh. You're not going to go through that entire container, there's no way. Um, you might go through with a pound of meat, maybe 15. So you're just going to take them out and you're going to submerge them in the water and that's going to take away that salty brine. As you saw, I didn't add a lot of salt. I added very little soy sauce because these leaves really do have a kick. And you don't want to kill anybody with the salt. Just nicely layering them, being very, very gentle. They'll stay up in your fridge for yeah, maybe two, three months, and they'll be fine as long as you're submerged in the brine. All right, so that looks good. Now I didn't use this whole bundle, so I'm just going to gently roll it back up and stick it back in. So that'll go right back in the fridge. So now I'm going to dry off my surface. And what I have here is just a plain baking pan. I put some oil down on it so the grape leaves don't stick. Got everything in place. Take a spoon or a spatula that we have. And you want to take, I would say, a good two ounces of meat. Just about that. It depends on the size of your leaf. As you can see, some of these leaves are different sizes. And you're going to put the meat right on the one edge. 
think about making like a turkey wrap for lunch. That's pretty much what you're gonna do. You're gonna take the sides, you're gonna fold them in a little bit, you're gonna flip over the back, and you're just gonna roll. It was funny trying to show my mom that she just could not understand the concept of bringing the sides in. But it's, it's that easy. You just roll them up, it looks just like that. It's beautiful, it's like a cigar. You're gonna put the seam side down. The reason you're gonna do that is when it cooks, the, uh, the fat that's in the meat is gonna actually help seal that seam. Okay. okay. I know it seems really tedious and doing three pounds of meat, it, it takes a long, long time. And this is fun to do with other people around, but it's not that hard. It's, it's like rolling meatballs, you just, just go for it. If you have a, a ripped grape leaf, don't worry about it. Again, the fat's gonna seal it, so just kind of go around the rip. And that's it. Come out perfect. Hold up nice, and they're gonna go right in the broiler. You gotta watch them. You know, you're broiling something, you're gonna wanna turn it about halfway. It really doesn't take more than four minutes on each side. And what's really cool, again, like I said, you can triple this recipe, freeze them when they're like this, and then throw them in the broiler whenever you want them. And then a fun nice spin on like uh, meatballs and, and spaghetti. You can do rice noodles and throw on your grape leaves and you have a Vietnamese style meatballs and, and pasta. It's great, enjoy. So first up we have chicken wings. You can't have a party without chicken wings. Super Bowl, anything, chicken wings are great. But the best part about these, they're easy and they're baked. No fryer, no grease, so much more healthy for you. In here, just have some chicken wings. Go to any butcher, ask them for party wings. So now it's the fun part. You can spice it up however you want. I keep mine nice and simple. I want something that's really basic, use spices that you have in your cabinet. But if you want to get creative and make it Jamaican jerk or barbecue, go for it. So it's pretty simple. Start with an oiled pan. You can have a couple small baking sheets. We're lucky we have the industrial stuff here. Great. So, back to our chicken. We have four pounds of chicken. Now you can use this recipe and multiply it by however much you want. Um, just remember the proportions are four to one. So we're gonna start with our chicken and we're just gonna put some good olive oil in there. I know most chefs would use a blended olive oil, but I like to use regular olive oil. I know it's more expensive, but I really think the flavor makes a difference. So now, take the olive oil and mix it around. Now, as you're gonna see here, I have one tablespoon of paprika, one of onion powder, one of garlic powder, one of pepper, and some salt. You can really adjust this however you want. If you want to add sugar, brown sugar, get a nice glaze on it, please do it. Um, for me, the biggest thing is the paprika. It really gives it the color. So we're just going to slowly cut it all on. It's that easy. Now you're going to notice there's no wet ingredients here. So don't think of chicken wings like drenched in hot sauce and then being baked off because it's not necessarily like that. Um, especially with this recipe, since you're baking it, you want to get a nice crisp outside and no need for the hot sauce. If you're into that, just add it on the side. At the end, you can give it a nice toss. That's fine. I mean, it is that simple. They are ready look good. I would say I used maybe about two tablespoons of olive oil on that. So again, they are very low fat. The skin on the chicken has a lot of fat in it, so there's really no need to uh, overdo it. So now all I'm gonna do, put out the wings. And it's important that you separate them because you really, they're gonna start to stick and you're gonna wanna be able to take a spatula about halfway through and turn them around. What a great James A. meal. I just made these for the Super Bowl and my friends ate them probably under five minutes. So definitely double up the amount that you think you're gonna need. Now don't be scared if you get these from the butcher and you have the leg portion and the wing portion together. That's how they normally come unless you ask for party wings. So if you get that, it's not a big deal. Just chop them with a chopping knife and you won't have a problem. That's it. That's all the work you need to do. Now you're gonna stick it in the oven about 450 degrees for an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. Take it out. You're gonna use a spatula about halfway and turn them all over. They're gonna stick. I have this oiled and foiled and they're still gonna stick. So very gently, take your time, flip them over, try not to rip the bottom. Put it back in for about another 20, 25 minutes. And after a total of an hour, hour and 45 minutes, you're gonna have some pretty awesome chicken wings. Serve with hot sauce if you want, blue cheese, ranch dressing, whatever you like.
Don't forget the carrots and celery. You need your vegetables. That's it. My chicken wings. It doesn't get any better or easier than this. That's it. Look how crispy they are. They are unbelievable. Now, one thing I forgot to mention before, you know, being gluten-free, it's really hard to get chicken wings anywhere. They might say they're gluten-free, but if they just threw french fries in that fryer or chicken wings or chicken fingers, anything with flour, those chicken wings are not going to be gluten-free anymore. They're contaminated with whatever meat was in the fryer. So by baking them off, you know that there's no cross-contamination. They're completely flour, wheat-free, gluten-free, and safe to eat. So what you see out here is the chicken wings, and then you all know me, I'm guilt-free, so it's got to be celery and carrots and tons of it. And then yes, this is regular blue cheese, but you know, don't be intimidated or scared to make your own. Yogurt, some fresh blue cheese, you're cutting the fat and calories in half. And there's a lot of easy remedies to not be using unhealthy blue cheese. And that's it. You have your chicken wings, celery and carrots for the game. Enjoy. So here we have our finished product. We have our grape leaves, we have our chicken wings. We also have our chicken salad, gluten-free, healthy, all the way. Any words? This seems like a great party pack to me. I'm pretty excited. Baked chicken wings, super healthy. Chicken salad, you can't beat that on gluten-free bread. Sweet Christine's awesome. Sweet Christine is definitely yeah. awesome. She gets two thumbs up from us. Yeah, absolutely. And grape leaves. I mean, that's that's the winner right there. They're secretly my favorite. I love these grape leaves that she does. Stuff with the turkey meat, broiled at the end, give it that little crisp on the top. Gotta love it, gotta love it. They were great on that TV show. Yeah, they that definitely was a lot were. of fun. <laughs> I was still in her food backstage. <laughs> Shh. So, you wanna try something? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so it's just cool. I need to try this chicken salad. Okay, I'm gonna go, you already know. I'm trading spaces. Get That's out of here. I want a great leaf. This looks amazing. Always, mm. your chicken salads are like killer. I love these Colorful. so much. I can't even talk. Two up wow. top, two up top. That is great. We already know how the wings taste. I'm still working on my wings. Yeah, we're not gonna lie, we're eating so many wings backstage. <laughs> that chicken salad, that fruit, the vegetables, everything, it just comes together awesome. I love the way you incorporate the spices into the meat. The turkey doesn't even taste like turkey. If, you, if you're a sausage person, you're gonna actually think that's an Italian sausage, or chorizo, actually. You didn't believe me that there was no pork in there. I love it. Yeah, it is. No pork, you know I doesn't like I don't like pork that much. But great, as you can see. I'm I'm done talking. I'm gonna finish eating. Go ahead, Laura. Go away, camera. We want to bye, bye. bye. See you later. Until next week.